Brothers Company brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Judy Garland, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake in Meet Me in St. Louis. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. To the student of history, popular songs can often be a guide to the customs and manners of their time. And the theme song of tonight's play, Meet Me in St. Louis, from the studios of Metro-Golden-Mare, is a clue to the great American vogue of 1904, the World's Fair in Missouri. Ten million people attended it, but twice as many people in our listening audience will be going there tonight with three of Hollywood's most charming stars. The ever-popular Judy Garland, lovable Margaret O'Brien, and talented Tom Drake. They take you back to an era of nostalgic charm and a warm and hunting, haunting story of romance. In the year 1903, there lived in the city of St. Louis a family named Smith. There were Mr. and Mrs. Alonzo Smith and Grandpa Smith. There were also two daughters and a son, Rose, Esther, and Lonnie. Oh, yes, and another daughter, Tootie, aged eight, who at this moment perches next to Mr. Costello on Mr. Costello's ice wagon. Uh, my goodness, Tootie, at five o'clock. Mm, giddy up, me dress. Oh, how should thou feel now, Tootie? Any better? Oh, no. Poor Margaretha. I've never seen her look so pale. Mm, probably the heat. Been awful hot day. I doubt very much whether the Margaretha will live through the night. She has four fatal diseases. Mm, as rule, only takes one. She's going to have a beautiful funeral. Mr. Garbox and Papa gave me, all wrapped up in silver paper. Mm, that's the way to go if you got to go. Oh, she's got to go. How's Beatrice feeling? Oh, Beatrice don't mind the heat. Why, she's the strongest horse in St. Louis. Excuse me, Mr. Costello, but it's pronounced St. Louis. Mm, that's funny. Now take that their new song. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis, meet me. Oh, well, that's different. We sing that song all, all the time in our house. My sister Esther and my sister Rose and Grandpa and everybody. Well, St. Louis, St. Louis, it's still a grand old town. It's not a town, Mr. Costello. It's a city. And it's the only city that's going to have a world's fair. Gosh, wasn't I lucky to be born in my favorite city? You sure were, honey. So was I, and so was Beatrice. Is that right, Beatrice? Come on, gal. Get up. Me in St. Louis, Louis, meet me at the fair. Don't tell me the lights are shining any place but there. We will dance the hoochie coochie. You will be my tootsie woosie if you will meet me in St. Louis, Louis, meet me at the fair. Come on, Rose, and sing. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the fair. Don't tell me the lights are shining any place. Oh, hello, Papa. Did you just come home, Papa? The fair won't open for months, but that's all everybody talks about or sings about. I wish everybody would meet me at the fair and leave me alone. Where's Mama? Here I am, dear. Well, did you have a nice day, Alonzo? I had a terrible day, Anna. I lost the case. Oh, dear. Well, Papa, if losing a case depresses you so, why, why don't you give up law and go into some other business? All right, I will. Beginning tomorrow, I intend to play first base for the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> now, dear, you'll feel lots better as soon as you've had your dinner. Right now, I'm going to soak in a cool bath for one solid hour. Oh, but that's impossible. Katie's serving dinner in five minutes. Five minutes? Oh, Alonzo, we, uh, we planned on eating an hour earlier tonight. Uh, the plans have just been changed. I'm taking a bath. Oh, Rose, dear, I'm so sorry. I've told you, it's, it's nothing to upset the entire household about. Warren Sheffield, a Yale man, is going to telephone you at 6.30 long distance. And you say it's nothing to upset the household about. Oh, I wish everyone would just forget about it. Rose, you know as well as I do that the telephone is in the dining room, and you certainly don't want the whole family sitting there drinking in every word when a man proposes long distance. I don't see why you assume that Warren is going to propose to me. He's calling from New York. Do you know what that costs? I think that's just about enough of it. Now, where's Tootie? 
Delivering ice with Mr. Costello. No, she came back a few minutes ago. She's in the backyard burying her doll. Well, call her in and see that she gets washed. And Lonnie! Lonnie! Now, don't worry, Rose, dear. I'm sure everything will work out. Well, Mother, it's 6.30 and Papa isn't down yet. He will be any second. Judy, Grandpa! Lonnie, come on in, dinner! Has she telephoned yet, Rose? Grandpa, I'm not in the least concerned whether Mr. Sheffield called or not. Queen has spoken. I suppose Warren's too young, huh? Every fellow I introduce her to is too young. Now, listen, please. Your father will be right down. And if we eat dinner quickly, we may be finished by the time... Oh, 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 now I remember. Now I remember where I left my other roller skate. On the staircase. I hope I haven't held you up. I was just taking a little ride before dinner. Oh. Tootie, is this your roller skate? Yes, Papa. Thank you. You're welcome. And remind me to spank you after dinner. Yes, Papa. Lord, we thank thee for the bountiful blessings which we are about to receive. Amen. Ah, soup. Don't blame me if it's cold, Mr. Smith. So's the corned beef. Ah, Katie. No, 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 it's fine, delicious. Well, what's the matter with everybody? Eat your soup. I'll get it. Oh, oh Rose, let me Rose, get it. Get up, get up. Get up. Rose, what are you all jumping for? Sit still. Oh, I'll, I'll answer die. it. I'll simply die. Hello. What? New York? No, I'm not calling New York. What? Hello? 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 Hmm. And I'm going to have that instrument of torture ripped out of this house. Done so. Every telephone call is not for you, dear. That one wasn't. New York. Rose is crying. Well, well, what's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, it's nothing, Papa. It's just that you've ruined Rose's chances to get married, that's all. What did you say? That was Warren Sheffield calling long distance to propose. Oh, I see. Tootie, did you know there was a long distance call coming to this house? You know what, Papa? The ice man saw a drunkard get shot yesterday, and the blood put it out three feet. Answer yes or no. Yes. Lon, you knew about it? Yes, sir. Grandpa? Anna? Well, Anna, I'm curious. Just when was I voted out of this family? Oh, Alonzo, really? No. My eldest daughter is practically on a honeymoon, and everybody in St. Louis knows about it but me. Well, from now on, I'll handle all telephone calls that come to this house. But, Papa! Nobody answers the phone but me. But I. Thank you. Rose, answer the telephone. Thank you, Papa. Hello? Yes. Well, we'll put him on. Warren? Well, hello, Warren. How are you? Hello, Rose. Uh, I'm fine, Rose. How's St. Louis? Oh, what did you say? I said, how's St. Louis? Oh, it, it's fine. Fine. Is it uh, hot there? Yes, it's very hot. Oh, for goodness sake. What? Okay, can you hear me? Oh, oh, yes, I can hear you fine. Well... What did you say, Warren? Uh, nothing. I was waiting for you to say something. Oh. I can't hear you, Rose. That's funny. I can hear you plainly. Uh, Rose, I... I hope you won't misunderstand what I, I'm going to tell you. Yes? Well, I... I don't think you should mention this call to your family. Why not? Well, because there'd be H to pay if my family ever found out I called you long distance. He said there'd be H. My family's here and they don't think anything of it. Well, I'd better not waste any more of your time or money. Rose, I, I've still got 35 cents. I have an engagement. I think I can hear Joe's voice now. Oh, hello, Joe. Come on in. Uh, I'll sit down and write to you as soon as I hang up. Well, that'll be very nice. Goodbye, Warren. Well, that's the darndest proposal I ever heard. Well, I'll bet there isn't another girl in St. Louis who's had a Yale man call her long distance just to inquire about her health. If you don't mind, I, I'd like to be you. Rose, now, honey, now, you... Let her alone, Alonzo. Esther, dear, sit down. Yes, Mama. A Yale man, eh, Lonnie? Yes, Papa. That settles it. You're going to Princeton. <laughs> Oh, it's nice just sitting on the front porch, isn't it, Rose? I just love a summer night. Esther, wasn't that silly of me running away from the dinner table? Oh, Rose, I wish I had your... Oh, your staff affair. Esther, look, look. look. Hmm? Next door, our new neighbor. John Troy? Yes, on the lawn. Now, be perfectly calm. We can talk a little louder, but, but for goodness sakes, don't let on that we see him. Ready? Yes. Let's get a little closer to the railing. Isn't it a gorgeous night, Esther, dear? Oh, heavenly, Rose, just heavenly. 
He smokes a pipe. I understand they're having a fashion pavilion at the fair. Isn't that exciting? I shan't be at all surprised if Joe insists on taking me to the fair every single night. Joe's so overpowering. Oh, huh? Well, look, he just turned around and walked back into his house. Oh. Well, not very neighborly, I must say. Well, he's only lived here two weeks. You can't expect him to fling himself at you. Well, how am I going to meet him? I know. I'll get George Briggs to bring him over here to Long's going away party. Oh, Rose, could you? Of course. Let me get some stationery. We can write the invitations right now. He didn't even notice me. What if he can't come to our party? What if he's got a girl? The moment I saw him smile, I knew he was just my style. My only regret is we've never met. No, I dream of him all the while. But he doesn't know I exist. No matter how I may persist, so it's clear to see there's no hope for me, though I live at 5135 Kensington Avenue, and he lives at 5133. How can I Ignore the boy next door. I love him more than I can say. Doesn't try to please me, doesn't even tease me, and he never sees me glance his way. And though I'm heart so invited to a party on Saturday next in honor of our brother, Alonzo Smith, Jr., who is leaving for Princeton. Hoping you will honor us, I am cordially yours, Rose Smith. How's that, Eth? Well, it's pretty formal, but I guess we better be pretty formal to start with. Concrete, but his voice is wonderful. Rose, I've decided something. What? I'm going to let John Truett kiss me. <gasps> Esther Alicia Smith! Well, if we're going to get married, I might as well start it. Nice girls don't let men kiss them until after they're engaged. Men don't want the bloom rubbed off. Personally, I think I have too much bloom. Oh? Maybe that's the trouble with me. <laughs> think Princeton's all right, John, huh? Oh, Princeton's a peach of a school. A peach of a school. Well, that's where I'm going. I... Oh, Esther. Yes, Alonzo. Uh, may I present our neighbor, John Truett? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch the name. John Truett. Oh, well, welcome to our house, Mr. Truett. Well, thank you. You know, this is the first party I've been invited to since we moved to St. Louis. Oh, do you live here? Well, of course he lives here, right next door. Oh, well, that's where I've seen you. I thought you looked familiar. If this dance isn't taken, Miss Smith, I'd be very honored. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but... Oh, well, since you're our next-door neighbor. Thank you. Now, what in the heck's got into her? Is anyone would like 
some fruit punches, sir, in the dining room. Oh, Miss Esther. Yes, Mr. Truitt. There's a mouse in the house. Hmm? Look, on the hall stairs. Why, Tootie, why aren't you asleep? There was too much noise down here. Noise? Well, we've been dancing and singing. I want to sing, too. Oh, well, 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 all right. Come on, just one song. You know, too, this sings really quite well for a child. What would you like to sing, dear? Baby's Boat or Silver Moon? Oh, I hate those songs. I want to sing a new one. I was hmm last night, dear mother. Oh, well, you can't sing that. Well, do let her. She's such a sweet little thing. Sweet? She's a hoodlum. Oh, oh, no. No. Well, all right, Judy, go ahead. I was drunk last night, dear mother. I was drunk the night before. But if you'll forgive me, mother, I'll never get drunk anymore. Oh, 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 you're a very bad little girl. It's really Lon's fault, Mr. Truett. He teaches her those things. Now, Tootie, you scoot right up to bed this instant. Rose, oh, Rose, dear, might we have some dance music, please? Everybody. It looks like I'm the last one leaving. Well, good night, Miss Esther. Uh, good night. Thanks, Lars. It's your treat. Coming up, Ed. Eh? Don't forget your beauty sleep. Presently, Rose, dear. Well, I guess I better get going. Uh, well, we'll be seeing some more of you, won't we? Oh, you bet. Uh... You'll be joining the crowd Friday. We're all taking the trolley out to the fairgrounds. We want to see what progress they're making. Oh, sure, sure. Well, uh, good night. Good night. Oh, uh, that Welch rabbit was ginger peachy. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, and Mr. Truett. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, this is an untoward request, but would you mind accompanying me through the house while I turn out the lights? Well, I... It's just that I'm... Uh, afraid of mice. Oh, sure, sure. That's the least a man can do for his charming hostess. Just those two lights in the hall and then we'll be finished. Oh, if you can't see, just uh, take my hand, Mr. Truett. Well, uh, thanks. This way. Say, that's nice perfume. Do you like it? It's essence of violet. Exactly the kind my grandmother uses. No, this is different. <clears throat> well, here's the hall. Uh, hadn't we better leave those lights for you folks? I'll just turn them down dim. There. My, it's certainly dark in here with the lights off. Gosh, Miss Esther, I hope I'm not too presumptuous. But you don't need any beauty sleep. Oh, what a nice thing to say. How does it go? How does what go? That song, you know, you remind me of it. The way you are now, leaning over the banister. Over the banister leans a face, tenderly sweet and... And beguiling, while below her with tender grace, he watches the picture, smiling, a light burns. That was beautiful, Miss Esther. You can drop them, yes. This has been a great evening. I'll never forget it. Do you mean that? Yes, yes, I do. Do you, do you always shake hands with a girl when you say goodnight? Oh, no, sir. Only when I think an awful lot of her. Oh. 
And you know something else, Esther? Why? You've got a mighty strong grip for a girl. Well, good night, Esther. Good night, neighbor. Oh, 
All right, everybody. I guess we're all ready to go. Oh, all right, 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 right. Oh, Mrs. Me. Wilkins said she'd leave her hammock on the front porch. Uh, but the children, please bring it back after they're through steaming it. Maybe we will and maybe we won't. Anyway, you ain't coming. Well, why not? Because you're too little, Judy. Uh, hey, so who's going to take the Brokoff's house? Not me. It's too scary there. Even for Halloween. Mr. Bronkoff's got a great big beard. A great big bulldog. And he poisons cats and beats his All right, that. Tootie, why don't you go home? Somebody's got to take the Brokoff's. I'll uh, take him. I'll take the Brokoff. Oh, oh, boy, that I got. Oh, I'll let Tootie take him. Oh, Tootie, go on home till you grow up. I won't go home. I'm going to take the Brokoff. I'll torture him good and pull that roof down. Well, you got some flour? Yes. Just remember, if you don't hit Mr. Brock off in the face with a flower and say I hate you, the banshees will haunt you forever. They will? Well, what did you think? Well, here I go. Come back when your mission is over. We meet meeting here around the fire. Chester was here. I can't do it. I can't. I'm too scared. Well, what do you want? Don't try to run away. Yes, sir. Did you ring my bell, ghost? Yes, sir. Well, go on. Throw the flower on me. All right. Some more on my beard. Yes, sir. Now say it. Say it! I hate you, Mr. Brokoff. That's fine, Judy. Good night, dear. I'm the most horrible. I'm the most horrible of everybody. That's you, Judy. I'm coming. Well, did you have enough? For Glennie. Fester, you better come quick. Something's happened to Tootie. What are you talking about? Don't wet a trolley. She got hurt, Esther. She's bleeding like anything. Oh. <laughs> Esther, did you get Pop on the telephone? No, Mama. They, they said he just left. It's Tootie's lip, Mama. It's all cut. Oh, good heavens. And a tooth knocked out. Katie, another compress. There, darling. There, everything's going to be fine. He tried to kill me. Tootie. She must mean the streetcar. I think it hit her. It wasn't the streetcar. It was John Truett. John Truett. Oh, John Truett. He was going to kill me. That's how I got hurt. But when I screamed, he ran away. Judy Smith, that's a monstrous falsehood. Wait a minute. Judy, honey, what's that in your hand? Come on, let Grandpa see. Why, it's some strands of hair. Yes, and I don't think it's Judy's. I pulled it out of his head. He tried to kill me. Brown hair. John Truett has brown hair. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Esther. Come in. John Truett? Yes, Hey, now, wait a minute. I've come here to ask you something. Hey, wait a minute. Really? What do you mean by hitting a little seven-year-old child? Esther, cut it out. Well, next time you want to pick on somebody, pick on somebody your own size. Esther. If there's anything I hate and loathe, despise, and abominate, it's a bully. <laughs> I want to sleep in Esther's bed, Mama. Of course you may, darling. Oh, I hate to think what your father's going to say when he hears about this. He may even strike that truth, boy. He won't have to, Mama. I just took care of him. I was drunk last night, dear Mother. I was drunk the night before. Esther, your dress is torn. What must have happened when I was trying to hold him off? I bit him. I bit him, too. Did you, Tootie? That's not what Tommy Berkheimer says. I've just been talking to him. Did the trolley go off the tracks, Grandpa? No, but the cable came off and the motorman put on the brakes so fast. At least that's what Tommy tells me. What are you talking about? It seems the kids had found an old suit of clothes, so they stuffed it in the store and somebody put it on the trolley tracks. We thought the car would go off the tracks, Judy Smith. Why, you're nothing less than a murderer. You might have killed dozens of people. Oh, Rose, you're so stuck up. Judy, how did you get that lip? How? Because John Truett butted in. He dragged me up an alley so the policeman wouldn't get me. Huh. As though policemen never pay attention to girls. But I pulled his hair and got away. 
Then I fell down and cut my lip. Oh, what I'm going to do to you. Yes, let her alone. <laughs> well, what's so funny, Rose? I don't see anything so funny. <laughs> Judy, really, you're the most deceitful, sinful little creature I've ever seen. And for two cents... Merciful heavens. John. Oh, no, Esther, not again, please. John, oh, John, there's been a terrible mistake. There has? Oh, yes, you see, I... Did I do that? Black eyes, and this, and this, and this. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's all right. How's Tootie? Oh, she'll live. John, it's... It's awfully nice of you to accept my apology. Well, if you're not busy tomorrow night, could you beat me up again? <laughs> Well, I guess I'd better be getting home. Oh, before you go, would you mind helping me turn out the lights? I'm afraid of mice. It looks like most of the lights are out. Wouldn't take a minute to turn them on again. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be kind of wasting a minute? Yeah, yeah, I guess it would, Esther. You know... Got a mighty strong grip for a boy. Sitting again, Tootie. I'll give you something. You. Oh, Esther, dear, I hope you. Why, Esther, is there anything wrong with you? Yes, Mama. Roses are red and John's name is Truett. Esther's in love and we always knew it. Tootie and I just made it up. Oh, Mama, can't you make Tootie and Grandpa stop? We'd make one up for you too, Rose, except we can't find anything to rhyme with Warren. Is this where the Smith family lives? Oh, Alonzo, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, Hello, Papa. Okay. I almost got killed. We stopped the trolley and I lost my tooth and Esther bit John Truett. And, and Tootie fell in and cut her lip. She's fine. Oh, that's a brave little girl, Tootie. Oh, um, Anna, for you. Why, Alonzo, what a lovely box of candy. Is anything wrong? So you think I've been up to something? Well, I have. Anna, the firm is sending me to New York. Well, that's lovely, dear. Just as long as you'll be home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I'm to head the office there. We're moving to New York. Moving to New York? I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. Why, Anna, I thought you'd be overjoyed. Why, New York is a big city. Not that St. Louis isn't big, but... Well... Well, what will the children do? The same as they do here. Go to school, play, have their friends over. What friends, Alonzo? Yes, what friends? The friends they'll meet in New York. And Tootie, just ready to be promoted. And Esther, a senior. I've worked all my life to be a senior. And Rose in the Conservatory of Music. Yes, what about me in my life? You can take that with you. Now, it's settled. We're going. Well, I must say you're being very cold-blooded... Packing us off, lock, stock, and barrel. I've got our future to think about. I've got to worry about where the money's coming from. With Lon in Princeton and Rose in music school. Money? I hate Rose, despise, and abominate money. You also spend it. And what about Katie? And Grandpa? And the chickens? Not that we have many left. That's a minor detail we can discuss later. So I'm a minor detail, am I? You know very well, Papa, I was talking about the chicken. Never mind what happens to your family, as long as the chickens are provided. No, no, no. I guess we're all a little excited. We'll talk this over calmly tomorrow. Well, what's this? Hickory nut cake. As only Kate can make it. We had some Halloween ice cream, but it's all gone, Alonzo. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't go to New York. I simply can't. I'm taking my cat. Winona goes wherever I go. Well, you keep her cooped up in a tenement. Oh, oh. good evening, Katie. Couldn't help overhearing. Don't they have houses in New York? Rich people have houses. People like us live in flats. Thousands of people in one building. And what about the World's Fair? Yes, just when St. Louis was going to be the center of attraction of the entire universe. <sighs> Katie, this cake is as light as a feather. You can bake anything in our stove. They got little box stoves in them tenements. <clears throat> Pass your plates, everybody. Have some cake. Thanks. I guess I got some things to do. Excuse me. Well, you going up too, Grandpa? I, I guess I'll help Katie with the ice cream dishes, Mama. Me too. As long as we're moving, it won't matter if I break something. <sighs> well, aren't you afraid, Anna? Alone in this room with a, a criminal? That's what I'm being treated like. Now it's not as bad as that, dear. 
If you think it's best to move to New York, why, that's what we'll do. Eat your cake, Alonzo. Uh, it's good to hear you play, Anna. Why, that's a nice song. Remember when I used to sing it? <laughs> grouchy just because Lucille Ballard doesn't think you're good enough to take her to the dance tonight. A girl has a right to go to a dance with anyone she wants. I I just didn't ask her soon enough. Everyone knows Miss Ballard is just an eastern snob. And I'll thank you, Rose, to keep Miss Ballard's name out of this. You're in a fine mood yourself, all because Warren Sheffield asked her instead of you. That's not true. Rose could have had any man she wanted. Except Warren Sheffield. Everyone knows that Lucille Ballard is just throwing herself at Warren because of his father's money. Now, that's what I call real Christmas spirit. Lonnie, you and Rose have spent this whole vacation at each other's throats. Now, just a minute, Katie. Didn't it ever occur to you that you might take your sister to the dance? What? My own brother? I'd be the laughing stock of St. Louis. Well, thank you. Katie's absolutely right. Oh, Lon, it's our last dance in St. Louis, and it'd be tragic if either of you missed it. It's all right for you to talk. You have a date, a real one. Rose, if I didn't have a date with John Truett, which I have, I'd be thrilled to go with my own brother. Well, I'd be willing, Rose. I mean, I'd be glad to. You would? Well, I was going to ask you anyway, but I... Well, you two are going to have the best time of anybody. You won't even have to be polite to each other. <laughs> Half past seven. Oh, oh Ash, you look grand. Simply grand. Oh. Of course, it makes you feel you're just elegant. I feel elegant. But I can't breathe. We have to start one sometime. And if we're going to wreck Lucille Ballard's evening, we definitely need every ounce of allure. Oh, Rose, don't you think I could be alluring without a course? No, Esther, I don't. After all, you're competing with an Eastern girl. We'll have to monopolize all the worthwhile men. Well... There are only going to be about 20 boys worth looking at, and we can certainly handle 20 men. But what about John Truett? Oh, I'll devote myself to John, but in between times, I'm going to make my presence felt amongst the others. Yes, what is it, Tootie? Somebody use the back door to see you. Who? Gosh, do you look funny? Rose, could I please wear a corset, too? Oh, Tootie. Who's at the back door? Somebody that looks like John Truett. Oh, Rose, give me my kimono. I wonder what he could want. What are you giving me for Christmas, Rose? You'll find out tomorrow. I certainly hope it's a hunting knife. Nothing I need worse than a good hunting knife. Why, John? Well, come on in. Yes. I, uh, I have some bad news. My tuxedo. W what about it? It's at the tailor's. You see, I was playing basketball, and when I got there, it was closed. But can't you borrow one? I've tried, but everybody who's got one is going to the ball. Well, find the tailor and have him open the shop. What well, about your father's? Well, that was my father's. Then find the tailor and make him open the shop. Well, I know his name is Johnson, but I, I, I don't know where he lives. Well, this is simply ghastly. Oh, yes, I wouldn't blame you if you never spoke to me again. 
Oh, you you didn't do it on purpose. Well, I guess there's nothing else I can say. Unless you want to do something else tonight. No, I'll just stay home and do some packing. You know, we're leaving St. Louis in a few days. I know. And this is a fine going away present I'm giving you. I'll bet you really hate me. Oh, no, John. I, I don't hate you. I just hate basketball. I wish I were dead, that's all. I know it's simply awful, Esther, but there's only one thing to do. Mom will have to take the both of us. You don't think I'm going to the smartest ball of the season with my own brother, do you? Well, I like that. You wanted me to go with him. Well, you didn't have a day. But I can't handle 20 men alone, I admit it. Did you ever stop to think of what people would say? Come in. Come in, Grandpa. You know, the man who built this house cheated your father. The walls are thin as paper. Oh, Grandpa. Now, now, now. Esther, it's a funny thing. I took my tuxedo out of the mothballs only yesterday. Looked pretty good, too. That suit of mine does the greatest one step you ever saw. Grandpa, are you actually... Esther, what's this too he says about you're not going to the dam? Who says I'm not going? Of course I'm going. But the handsomest man in town. Madame, I'll pick you up at eight. Esther, Esther, I'm here. I made it. John! Oh, gosh, yes. I couldn't find Mr. Johnson until 20 minutes of 10. But he opened his shop... Well, here I am. Oh, John, so much has happened, and I'm so glad. If I'm crying, it's just because everything's turned out so simply divinely, and it's Christmas almost, and I... Well, what's happened? Well, don't you see them dancing, Rose and Warren Sheffield? Miss Ballard is a simply charming girl, even if she is an Easterner. She said, we're all grown up, aren't we? And since Warren talks about, all he talks about is Rose, my goodness, why doesn't he fill out her dance car? <laughs> well, who's Lucille dancing with? Well, Lonnie, of course. Oh, she's terrible fond of him. It's really so obvious, and now you're here. And, oh, John, I've never been so happy in my life. Esther, could we... Could we go outside for a minute? I want to talk to you. Of course, John. I wouldn't have said it, Esther, if I thought it would make you cry again. Are you sure you're warm enough? Uh Oh, I've imagined you saying it thousands of times, and I'd always planned exactly how I'd act. I've never planned to cry. Well, at least you didn't laugh. Laugh? I guess I never asked a girl to marry me before. I guess maybe I was kind of... Oh, John, no one could have done it more beautifully. I'm very proud. Esther, will you... Will you, Esther? Of course I will, John. Oh, gosh. Do you realize I might have lost you? A few more days and you'd have been gone. We might never have seen each other again. And now we're engaged. Esther, let's go home and tell your folks right now. Oh, no, I... Not, not tonight. I'd, I'd rather just the two of us knew about it tonight. No, we're not going to let them talk us out of it, are we? After all, we are of age. Well, practically. John, even, even if I do go to New York, we could still work something out somehow. C- couldn't we, John? Can I come in bed with you? Of course, darling. Come on now. Cover up. You weren't asleep either, were you? No, I've just been lying here thinking. Was the dancing nice? Wonderful. I've been watching. The moon's so bright, but I haven't seen anything. Did he come? Did who come? Santa Claus. Now you know he's not going to come until you're asleep. Then sing to me, Esther. Sing to me till I'm asleep. What kind of a song, Tootie? A Christmas song. Next year, all our 
then we'll have to muddle through somehow. So have yourself a merry little Christmas night. Judy, you're still awake. I can't go to sleep. Oh, Esther, how will Santa Claus know where to find us next year? We'll be in New York. Oh, you can't fool him. He can find anybody he wants to find. If he brings me any toys, I'm taking them with me. I'm taking my dolls and the dead ones, too. I'm taking everything. Of course you are. You won't have to leave anything behind. Except your snowman, of course. My snowman. Oh, we'd look pretty silly trying to get them on the train, wouldn't we? My snowman, snowman. Did he come back? My poor little snowman. What is going to happen to them? Snowman, snowman. Tootie, darling, it's all right. It's all right, darling. What on earth happened, Esther? What was Tootie doing in the backyard? She just ran into the backyard, Papa, and started to smash her snowman. Nobody's going to have my snowman. Not if we're moving to New York. Now, don't cry, darling. You can build other snowmen in New York. No, you can't. You can't do anything in New York like you can in St. Louis. You sure she'll be all right? Yes, Papa, you go back to bed. I'll take care of her. Well, good night, Esther. Good night, Papa. Trudy, darling, New York's a wonderful place. When when you see the fine home we're going to have and and the friends we're going to make. But the main thing, Trudy, is that we're all going to be together. Just like we've always been. That's what really counts. We could be happy anywhere as long as we're together. <laughs> Anna! Anna, wake up! Rose! Grandpa yes, and Lonnie! Everybody get up. Papa. Esther, Tootie, come on, come on, all of you. Come on downstairs. Oh, Papa, Papa, what's wrong? Everything's wrong. Anna, where are you? I Grandpa, come Papa. downstairs this minute. Everybody get in here and sit down. There's nothing to sit on, dear, except packing boxes. Then come into the dining room. I've got a few words to say to this family. Oh, oh, what in the world's the matter? Well... We are not moving to New York. Oh, what? Oh, yes, and I don't want to hear a word about it. We're going to stay right here in St. Louis till we rot. We haven't rotted yet, Alonzo. Oh, but what will you say to the firm, Papa, to Mr. Felton? That I've changed my mind. I'm a junior partner, not a puppet on the string. If they don't like it, well, that's just too bad. But New York, Alonzo, you, you did think it was a fine opportunity, didn't you? I... I was looking forward to going, yes. But after all these weeks, watching my family's hearts breaking and... And then Tootie a little while ago... And, and... <laughs> well, New York hasn't got a copyright on opportunity. St. Louis is a great town. The trouble with you people is you don't appreciate it because it's right here under your noses. I'll take that. Hello! Rose? Oh, I'm... Do I sound like Rose? Well, then get her to the phone. Wake her up or something. No, just a minute, young man. Who do you think you're talking Papa, to? Papa, I... please, let me take it. Hello? Rose Smith, I haven't slept a wing since I took you home from the dance, and I won't go on like this any longer. We're going to get married, and I don't want to hear any arguments. Now, let's fight. Oh, I love you. Why? Why? But why? Anna, who is that boy? Do you know? Alonzo, he's a very fine young man. Now, we'll talk about oh, it later. Oh, Rose, darling, you handle the whole thing magnificently. He's just putty in your hands. Uh, I hope you'll be very happy, Rose. And sometime, if you can arrange it. I'd like to meet that young fellow. Oh, Papa, Mom, if Rose is going to get married, maybe we ought to open up her Christmas present. <laughs> you little faker, it's your present you're after. <laughs> He's been here, Santa Claus. Well, of course, in the living room. Good heavens, it's Christmas morning. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Oh, Papa, you've given us the nicest Christmas anybody could ask for. We're staying in St. Louis. <laughs> Mr. Costello. Good morning, Tootie. Want to help me deliver ice today? Today? Do you know what today is? Sure do. First day of May, 1904. It's fair day, Mr. Costello. Today's the day the World's Fair opens. My family's going, and Papa says we're not going to leave till they throw us out. Is that a fact? Well, do you have to But don't you worry, Mr. Costello. I'll help you deliver ice tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, John, it's 
It's 8 o'clock. We promised to meet the family for dinner at the French Pavilion. Oh, we'll be there, Esther. I just didn't want you to miss this. Miss what, John? The electric lights. Look, yes. They're turning them on. Oh! There they come. Oh! Oh, it's just breathtaking. I never dreamed anything could be so beautiful. Imagine there's never been anything like this in the whole world. That's right, S. Nothing like this and no one like you. Just think of all the things we'll have to tell our kids someday. Uh, I wonder if they'll believe it, John. I can hardly believe it myself. You and a world's fair. Right here where we live. Right here in St. Louis. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Now that you've met them in St. Louis, we invite you to meet them here as they are in real life. Tonight's delightful stars, Judy Garland, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake. Judy, we enjoyed both your singing and your acting. Well, Bill, tonight's play certainly puts one in the mood for Christmas. You know, Christmas is only 23 days away. <laughs> That's close figuring, Margaret. And, Judy, this will be the first Christmas for the newest member of your family. <laughs> Have you brought the uh, uh, baby any presents yet, Judy? Well, I haven't done much shopping yet, Margaret. No, Judy's been pretty busy. It was just recently she finished her latest metro golden uh, Technicolor picture till the clouds rolled by. Well, Margaret's been pretty busy, too. She's been appointed national junior chairman of the Infantile Paralysis Fund. Just three weeks and 48 hours until Christmas. <laughs> and during the Christmas holidays, Margaret, you'll have to see Tom Drake's new MGM picture, Courage of Lassie. Oh, as a matter of fact, Margaret has one of Lassie's puppies. Is that right, Margaret? Yes, I named him Laddie. But just only 18 shopping days until Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Margaret. And we've been doing some shopping on the play for next week. What are you presenting next week, Bill? Two brilliant stars who rank among our greatest favorites, Irene Dunn and Walter Pidgeon. <gasps> they appeared in one of the screen's most entertaining comedies, Columbia Pictures' recent hit, Together Again. It's the fresh, delightful story of a woman torn between love and her career as a small-town mayor, a play I'm sure our audience will love. Well, Irene Dunn and Walter Pigeon make a great team, Mr. Keeley. Just 23 days away. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, too, the days are getting shorter, Margaret. <laughs> Gee, that, that makes things even better. better. <laughs> <laughs> Good night and Good best night. holiday wishes to 